Okay, so let me do my right, little thing. Find up your collars right. real quick. Right. Oh. Okay. So What's everybody? This is Sierra Chanel. We're here with Barbo Blanche. I almost forgot the name. Of, I almost forgot the name of this. Uh, I almost uh, forgot the name of um, my own anyways, show. Anyway, we're here with the Barbo broadcast. Uh, we're here at Delta Weightlifting. Uh, you can't really see it. It's back there, but it's awesome. Yeah, we're, we're on this we'll awesome couch. couch right now. See the couch. <laughs> we'll do a tour um, after. Let's introduce ourselves. Everyone knows me. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Thank you very much for having me on. Here. He's been on. He's been on. He's like, I'm new. I'm brand new. Dude, we get and, to talk uh, to Don. Heck yeah. And, and a special guest we've got. This is your camera here. Don Ricci, the uh, owner and head coach of Delta Weightlifting. And uh, thanks for having me on. Awesome. awesome. Really quick, you said Ricci. Yes. Not Ricci. Yes. Distinguished. Get it right. Between, yeah, that's what. Okay. It's uh, Italian? It's, yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's Italian. So that's, uh, that's how we. That's how we pronounce it. Ricci. Right. Okay. Ricci. Right. All right. All right. So today we're going to be talking about the relationship between coach and athlete. And I got two coaches here and I'm the athlete. So All right. fight. Anyway, so <laughs> um, just really quick asking both of you, I mean, what do you expect? I guess, what do you expect? If someone just came up to you, had no, like for instance, like me, had no real background of into athletic training, um, how would you typically start me off in weightlifting? Where would you start? No athletic training? No athletic training, like nothing. Maybe <laughs> walking, um, <laughs> but like, you know, pretty much. Are they sedentary? My, my <laughs> central nervous system is like really slow. Already Basically. fresh. Not yeah, fresh. just really fresh. All right, Don, Don go ahead. So it's a good question, because a lot of people, well, first off, this type of training can be very intimidating. Yeah. Or, uh, for people, for people who have never done this before. The good thing is that CrossFit has been very, very instrumental in introducing non-athletes to this type of training. So, okay. Uh, yeah, it's one of the reasons why I'm able to have a gym like this is because of the growth of CrossFit. With the growth of CrossFit too, this barbell training is getting out there more. So uh, what we've been seeing is we've been getting more people coming through the door or uh, getting inquiries from people that have never never done CrossFit uh, but are aware of barbell training now. Yep. You may not have any experience with this type of training, but one of the first questions is what uh, do you have any type of athletic experience growing up? Okay. Uh, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Uh, so it's really when we get someone with, with very little sports background, coupled with no barbell training, uh, it's a recipe for disaster, not like, I mean, you know, it, it's, know. It's, it, it, well, it, it, depends, it depends on the person. Pipe, okay. It depends on the person. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, uh, uh, it's a hard question to answer because, well, when it comes to coaching, there's very few black answers that are black and white. Okay, right. Uh, there are, most answers are it depends. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the person that's, that's walking through right. the door. So it's right. going to depend on 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 their uh, on their personal development. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've had people that come in the door that never touched the barbell before that uh, pick it up pretty quickly uh, oh. because, you know, let's say they, they played, uh, you know, they did uh, martial arts when they were growing up. Um, or, or they played basketball in high school. Right, so they had some type of athletic background, however, they may not have been introduced to a barbell right. through that training. Right, like one, of, one of our members hadn't stepped in a gym in seven years, but okay. he, he was uh, uh, growing up when he was a kid, he was a black belt, and he played, played high school uh, basketball. Okay. Um, so he's an athletic, athletic guy, but you know, up until being here, he hadn't been in a gym in seven years. Conversely, we've also had people that have never touched a barbell before that don't have an athletic back. That's me. And so, <laughs> That's me. You know, with those with those individuals, the development's a little slower, mm -hmm. but we do this. We still do similar. We still do the similar things. It's very similar in CrossFit is that you know the exercises don't change, but the the the, uh, the application may change. We may do a trainer ball for a back squat. Okay. Uh, uh, for an overhead squat, we may do uh, uh, 
an overhead squat with a wooden dowel facing the wall. Mm-hmm. And as the, the athlete, as the, that individual uh, develops at their own pace, then we implement new things. So then how do you do with someone, uh, for instance, who may not be quite at the level yet to have like, you know, the actual barbell and not just the training bar. They're just really eager and they're like, no, no, no I, I want to do this, I want to do this. How do, you, how do you deal with athletes that, you know, are just maybe mentally they're so far ahead, but physically they're not yes. quite yet there yet? Well, it's something you have to stress. I think what, what, well, what your vision, what your, what your culture, what you expect uh, from your athletes. Okay. Uh, you know, and that's something that we make very, very visible. Um, in the sense that it doesn't matter if you come in and never touch the barbell before, or even if you're one of our, our competitors, mm-hmm. uh, the focus, the emphasis is never really the weight, but it's how you move. When you, if you set that tone early, or you set that expectation early, it's, it's easier for the athlete to get it. When you set the expectation of when they first come in the door, I don't care if we work with a stick. Um, if you do it right, that's you're going to have more benefit with that than than muscling up a, a weight that you necessarily can't handle yet. Right. Well, when it comes to getting stronger, I want to make a differentiation too. When it comes to making getting stronger, you know, you want to see more weight. In order to get strong, you have to lift more weight. Right. Uh, so when it comes to squat, like some of the more basic barbell movement squats pulls, presses, uh, yeah, I, 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 so long as they're doing it right, let's keep adding weight, yeah. keep adding weight. As long as what their technique can handle, right. handle the weight. Now, when it comes to like the snatch and clean drill, more the dynamic movements, the, the more explosive movements, uh, there's there's benefits to to doing the weights, at a, uh, there's doing the lifts at a lighter weight. Yeah, there's, those lifts help build other characteristics, speed, coordination, agility. So if you get good at doing uh, doing the lift at, let's say, just the bar, you're still improving, uh, well, more or less, you're, you're, you're improving your central nervous system, the efficiency of your central nervous system. So if you, by doing that with the beginner, they're going to get stronger because their nervous system is becoming more efficient. You call it the beginner effect. When a beginner comes in the door, you see they see massive gains mm-hmm. very quickly. Um, it's not necessarily because they're getting stronger per se; it's their nervous system is being more efficient. Yeah, it's kind of a long-winded way of saying <laughs> set, set the expectations right. But that's why that's why we set the expectations at that uh, uh, right right from the get-go. Right. Uh, no, that's not to say we have some members that get a little ambitious from time to time. <laughs> yeah. Or some of our... Sneak some uh, weights on the bar. Can, right. Uh, <laughs> Coach but, is you looking know, every other way. Right, right. <laughs> Let's get those uh, lifts. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, you set, as long as you set that expectation right from the get-go, yeah, it, well, especially with the beginner that's never touched a barbell and, and, and uh, doesn't have a whole lot of athletic experience, uh, it's... It, it, to me, it would seem a little more comforting knowing that it's not about the weight. Because you walk into this place and you see someone smashing clean jerk and squatting a lot of weight. Being a beginner, it can be a it can be a little intimidating. So you set that expectation and it kind of eases the, the nerves as well. But at the same time, it's kind of cool to come in here and be like, you can see Jake Baker, you can see Cecily just like, move some weights and see what the mm-hmm. human body is capable of and it's like oh, right. oh, wow this is cool that's is, uh, that's something that the human body can, can do. that's one thing uh, so I have my competitive weightlifting team I don't have a separate time where my competitive team trains okay uh, they're just kind of mixed in with part, right well partly because everyone's schedules are so right, right. wacky with school and mm-hmm. some work part-time so they're they're mixed in uh, they're mixed in with our members, with, with our regular members, uh, and I did that for two reasons. One, selfishly, so I have, I do have a break in the middle of the day that I can rest. <laughs> yeah. uh, so and, I just need breaks. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I want the regular members, whether they're they've never touched a barbell before, um, or um, they have, and they do have experience, but they're not 
that they're not doing this to compete. I want them to see how it's done. I don't want it, my goal is for it not to be intimidating, but to be inspiring. It's, but it comes down to that setting that expectation again. It's like if you're a beginner, you're gonna see some, some massive weights mm -hmm. being lifted. And sometimes for the guys, you're gonna see some, some, some females lift more weights more than, than you. you. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, you use it, it, it as, as a source of motivation and something that's as, uh, for inspiration. Mm -hmm. Don't use it as something that, that's intimidating. Because right. if you have if uh, you know, it's, uh, you have that fear, you're gonna you're gonna run yourself out out the door. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it, well, it's a difference in perception. You know, as an athlete, I actually really uh, I really admire that just because if I'm lifting with people who maybe are not as maybe they're not. I mean, I'm not super strong. But if I you know if I'm if I'm lifting in a gym where maybe there's only two ollie lifters, other people that are like super beginners. There's no competition for me. I, I kind of like the oh, competition a little competition. bit. Competition, like, I like the competition good, yeah. a bit. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Well, so, right. um, and then if I see someone like you know, like our girls at the gym, they're lifting really heavy weights, and I'm like, I'm gonna get there. I'm not there yet, but I know if I stick to it, like how they did, I'm gonna right. get the same results. So right. Right. I do see where you know it's really important as a coach, as an owner of a gym, to have that environment in the gym so that you can just, you have lifelong members too. They want to keep coming back. Exactly. They want to keep exploring the sport, so. Yeah. Well, and also too, it's one of the, uh, you know, this may sound crass, but you know, if you come in and see people uh, lifting heavy weights and it's intimidating, well, this is the gym for you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if you're going to be scared about this, yeah. what else are you going to be scared about yeah. in, in personal life? We're just yes. giving it to you real right now. Yeah. So, Keeping so, it real right now. It's, it's, it's something that, that I, I strive, you know, um, uh, I like to use the phrase excellence in weightlifting. And it, it to me, you know, it's that the excellence in weightlifting has much more to do than just the weights. It's you know, the word excellence comes from a uh, uh, Greek word uh, and it means you know, high moral value. So if you have to me, excellence in weightlifting is uh, is symbiotic with um, how you how you view yourself and how you hold yourself outside of the gym. So if I have someone that comes in that that is intimidated because they don't have a high standard of themselves, uh, well, it's either go two ways. It's let's work on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So we reset your expectations mm -hmm. and and work on on. Uh, on you becoming a, a, a better, stronger person inside. Mm -hmm. um, and But if you're not willing to do that, well, then this isn't the place for you. Yeah. And when we get someone, just kind of tie it back in what we talked about earlier, when we get someone in that, that hasn't touched a barbell before, um, it's a beautiful thing because you can really do, you can really do a lot of good in that person's life. At the end of the day, that's why I coach. I think that's why a lot of us mm -hmm. coach. Yeah. Well, that starting point of starting them off right, the right process, right. doing the right things, right? Every and day, because yeah. you can be, a, you know, a, a, we have the ability to be a huge part in someone's life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes it's in the the, the grind of coaching. Um, it's hard to see that, and sometimes you don't see it uh, on the surface level. With that, with individuals when they're in here, um, but there's those special times where it does come out, mm -hmm. and that's really uh, uh, I've seen that. And it all that all starts when you get a beginner. Um, I think in our last episode we talked about, you know, Corinne mentioned that um, the trust and the the relationship you build with your uh, your coach is a big deal too, as far as like so as me. You know, Milo being my coach, I have to trust when he says go up or that's too that's too much or I have to be like okay, all right. Like even though you don't have like no, I can do, I can do it. But I have to tell myself like trust your coach because in the end, you know, you know, I'm 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 going to you for the help, right? So if I'm not listening to you, then why am I here? You know what I'm saying? So that's another thing I feel like is really important as far as getting into the sport or any sport in general is um, if you're going to have a coach and you want to be competitive in the sport. You should trust your coach. Get a coach too. Don't be like well, that's, yeah, that, that's, don't be like me, and, you know, and self-coach myself for like good eight oh. months, and finally, you know, seeked out help. But 
Well, you had to you had to train by yourself to realize that mm -hmm. first. So mm -hmm. that's one thing uh, you mentioned: uh, competitiveness. And my first thing is energy. Like you see people lifting weights, yes. that's going to get the enthusiasm because um, this this sport is very hard, uh, both on the mind and body. So that you get a group of people that are working together to to improve themselves. And Bob, Don brought up a, a great point of like improving ourselves, uh, you know, from the inside out. And uh, and that process day in and day out, the weights get tough sometimes and it's good to walk into a gym and everyone's, you know, at that point where they're just work, they're, they're, get, they're improving, they're, they come here to improve and get that enthusiasm, that energy. Um, <laughs> rather than just training by yourself. <laughs> and, uh, we had a bar drop. <laughs> yeah. He's fine, walk it off. I'm <laughs> no, he's, he's doing curls, man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Speaking of competitiveness, um, what are your guys' thoughts about a beginner who's obviously making some progress? How soon would you throw them into competition? Uh, good question. We have a co very competitive team in the sense that, uh, you know, my vision for that team, if you want to be on the competitive team, uh, the goal is to strive to be the best lifter you can. Really, the goal is you, you, uh, uh, to compete at the national level and compete for medals and to compete to to represent the, the, the u.s but you know having it having a commercial gym not everyone's going to be at be able to be at that level mm -hmm. um, so we also have members that don't have that to be a goal but they want to they want to uh, uh they want to experience what it feels like to be on the platform yeah, the, they the, want to excel like you said they want right. to, they want to make the same changes but may, maybe not at that same competitive level. Right. So, so yeah. we have we have we have a handful of our of our regular members that also that are starting to get to the point where they're they're you know they want to get their feet wet. They yeah. want to they don't want to compete at the national level. Right. You know, the, the, uh, uh, and and frankly, they'll probably never get to that point, and they know that. Uh, but they still want to still want that feeling of competition. They want to they want to challenge themselves. Exactly. Yeah. They want to they want to challenge themselves. So. Uh, you know, for those members that want to do that, you know, the things that we look at are, are you confident enough to do it? This is intimidating. Right. Going on the platform. The you know, to time. me, for, oh, yeah. for our members that want to compete, it's got to come from them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, this is a weightlifting gym, but everyone that's here isn't a competitor. Mm -hmm. Actually, the majority of people here are not competitors. Um, so if, if, if you're, if you're, here and your goal is not to compete at the national level, but you do want to compete. Uh, you know, it's either one or two things. The individual comes uh, has a, just has a talk with me um, and asks, "Hey, what do you uh, what do you think about me uh, competing at a, at a local level?" Um, uh, and most of the time, it's going to be a a, 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 a yes. I've been waiting. Absolutely right. Absolutely. <laughs> it's been like three months. I've been here or, three months already. No, <laughs> or yeah, or we, you know, we, we, tell, we have a couple members too that um, that show some promise. You know, they, they may not ever get to 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 the national level, but they they look like they know what they what they're doing. Uh, and I have I have I, I have confidence that they can go out there and rep, represent themselves and the gym uh, in a very good way. It's really about what their comfort level is, and uh, and really how they look. It's someone that comes in and they just they're all over the place. It looks like they're gonna kill themselves every time they touch a barbell. Um, <laughs> if, <laughs> even if they come and say, "Hey, what do you think about me getting into the meat?" Uh, the answer may be yes, but let's uh, let's look at that. X amount of months down the line. Mm. Let's we need to work on these things first. Because at the end of the day, the athletes are a representation of of the coach and, and the gym. Yeah. I set my expectations very high. So if you're uh, as a member, if you want to compete, well, you you, you got to look good. Yeah. You know, I, and again, that's that's the thing of that I don't care uh, what the weight is. You can have trainer plates on the bar. Yeah. As long as you look. Like what you know, but look like you know what you're doing. Go on Tommy Kono style. And let's go. Yeah, heck yeah, Tommy Kono. Right. Talked about excellence and morals and the characteristics that you learn through putting a time into a barbell, and it's just you know it's good to see that you're yeah. putting the time and effort uh, into developing people.
Yeah, I mean, awesome. at the end of the day, it's, well, I don't, who likes an asshole? Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> well, I'll be short with this and we'll wrap it up. Yeah. But, man, I'll take, I'll take 10 uh, uh, grinders, Ooh, yeah, 10 yeah. athletes that are, that are grinders mm -hmm. over one athlete that, that's, that's really, really talented, but lazy. Because it's so another yeah. podcast. Yeah, we gotta we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. Yeah. That's a great. Uh, <laughs> yes. we, 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 I, I could, I could rant about that for a while. That's a yeah. good one. Well, guys, thanks so much for uh, for yeah. having me. Yeah, thanks, Don. All right. Thank we just, you. Uh, we just created another podcast. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> All right. Talent versus no talent. The hard worker versus. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna definitely leave Coach Don's um, all of his information. Oh yeah, in post the... it up. Like, what's up, Don? Oh yeah. So uh, what's on Instagram. Shameless plug for now. Uh, <laughs> you can find us on Facebook, uh, uh, Delta Weightlifting, uh, on the internet at uh, deltaweightlifting.com, and uh, not on Twitter, uh, Instagram at delta underscore weightlifting. And if you're in the Sacramento area, you should definitely check out the gym. It's awesome. Yeah, just, just, it's got uh, everything you need. So, yeah. Give them the address. 7322 <laughs> Folsom Boulevard, Unit C, all the way in the back in Sacramento. Alrighty. Well, make sure you like, subscribe, and share the video to like, our homies. subscribe, share. Let's get the word out right here. Thank you, guys. Bye.